Hello, everyone, and welcome to an exciting presentation. And yes, this presentation is exciting because we've just released a brand new version of Tungsten Clustering and Tungsten Replicator, and this is version 7. Uh, my name is Matthew Lang. I'm a Customer Success Director here at Continuant, and I'm going to go through a little bit about the, the features and what's new in version 7 and how it can help you. So just before we dive into version seven, let's have a look and see what we've done in the past. Uh, because when we, when we release a new version, uh, there's a lot of effort that goes into it. And it's a pretty long development time, um, but the features that come out of it are just really uh, phenomenal. And I'd like to just point out some of the uh, main things that we've done. So if we look, say, at Tungsten version 5, we did that at the end of 2015. And that release was focused primarily on security and implementing SSL. And you could turn on uh, SSL for the whole cluster or just you know certain parts of the cluster, maybe just the connector um, communication to the manager, for instance, or just replicator, right, in-flight THL, have that encrypted. Um, there are also some in, in performance uh, improvements. Um, we actually made uh, connector bridge mode um, by default. Uh, that does give better performance uh, as far as connectivity goes at the MySQL uh, database level, level. And we also added a lot of replication targets for Tungsten Replicator. So I was going to go through and enumerate all of them, but they're just really a lot. And really just almost any target that you can think of, whether it's database or big data target, data lake, um, pretty much uh, Tungsten Replicator uh, support for any of those was built in starting at version five. So we jump ahead a couple of years to version six. And what was new there? Well, uh, you may remember that there was a brand new topology that we called composite active active. And we feel that it was an improvement to what we call multi-site, multi-master um, before version six. So that's when you have uh, two or more sites and they're both active. But now with comp composite active active, all the replication streams are managed and you can see them and manage them all in CCTRL. So before you had external replicators and that worked great, but this simplifies the installation and management. Also, Tungsten version six saw the introduction of Tungsten dashboard, which is our management tool, uh, graphical management tool, uh, which really shows how Tungsten clustering includes everything you need for clustering, connectivity, replication, orchestration, and with Tungsten dashboard, a graphical management tool. Uh, we also added support for a lot of uh, 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 new OS features like Linux System D, later versions of Java, and even uh, MySQL, Percona Server, and MariaDB versions. And we also introduced an API in its version 1.0. And that was used for the dashboard and some other tools. So Tungsten 6, also pretty major version. Uh, but now we're going to talk about Tungsten version 7. So let's look at the re really highlights, kind of the, the 5,000 foot overview. Um, but now there's a brand new API. We call it API 2.0, and it's a lot more efficient. Uh, we'll have a look at that. Uh, again, another focus on security, uh, enhanced monitoring. And that was a something that has been asked uh, from us by a number of customers, now, more monitoring. So we've come through and we've done that. Uh, improved management pieces, right? Uh, lots of new scripts, lots of new tools to help you manage the cluster and for automation. Uh, a brand new uh, Tungsten dashboard. Uh, under the covers, a lot of stuff refactored and it's a lot more efficient. We'll have a look at that as well. And then a brand new topology that we call dynamic active active. We haven't done this um, and, and years before we've had a brand new topology. So this is really exciting as well. Uh, so let's have a look at all of these. 
Uh, so first, Tungsten API 2.0, right? This is a huge improvement to our API. It's a fully risk compliant API. Um, and we give you a tool, uh, TAPI, T-A-P-I. Uh, it's a command line tool, and this provides access to the API to make it easy uh, to send commands to the API. Uh, it performs uh, much better than the original API version, uh, and there's less overhead with it. So why is this important, you know, a API? It's not something that you may ever use, but it's the foundation for where we're going in the future, right? Um, this is going to be uh, a big part of deployment uh, using Kubernetes. So more on that in the future, um, but it's kind of it's going to be a, an important piece of that. It's also the foundation for Tungsten Dashboard and all the new monitoring tools that we're providing. So this API is kind of under the covers, but it's actually really important, and it's going to enable Tungsten Cluster to do a lot more uh, integration and monitoring than ever before. So security, right? Um, so now we have SSL uh, by default enabled for all layers within the cluster in, uh, in new installs. Uh, you can turn that off if you want to, or you can enable SSL just at certain places, but by default, everything is on everywhere. Right, so everything is going to be encrypted um, using SSL. Uh, we've also made it easier to deploy SSL using your own certificates. Not not everyone needs to use their own certificates, but if you do, it's easier now to manage that process. Um, and we help you out by adding the certificates to the tungsten uh, key stores and trust stores. Right, uh, in general the certificate management is easier. Um, we did have, um, you know, we had some tools before to allow you to manage your certificates and build key store and trust stores, but now it's just streamlined. So it's that much easier. Um, and also uh, as far as security goes on disk THL encryption. So that's also important. The THL could contain sensitive data uh, therefore, if you want, you can encrypt it on disk at rest. And for monitoring enhancements, we expose now full metrics for all of the pieces, the connector, manager, and replicator. And they're all available now via Prometheus. Uh, our standard checks using Nagios and Zabbix are a lot faster. They are utilizing the API version two instead of the, the shell command. So that's a lot more efficient. And one other thing that we've done too is we've built audit logging into the connector. So the connector can actually produce a log to show what's been going through the connector, what queries are, are going through it. So you, you know, this kind of sounds like the MySQL general log, but now you can enable it at the connector layer and see what queries are being executed by which connectors. So that's really powerful too. Um, really great for debugging and to see if there's any sort of kind of performance, um, uh, any performance hits that you're seeing on a particular app server or connector. So we, we also have improvements in performance and the management tools as well. Uh, if we look at performance, uh, we can compress uh, THL on disk. Well, we can also encrypt it as, as mentioned before, we can compress and encrypt THL on disk, right? So that would save a lot of disk space. THL, as well as MySQL binary logs, can take a lot of space. So compressing them would save a lot of space. It also makes it faster too, uh, as far as access time when files are compressed. Uh, In-flight THL compression, this is great for slower networks or wide area networks. So when we're transferring THL from a primary to a replica node, we can compress the THL in flight. Again, great for slower connections or WAN applications. Uh, and there's also been just numerous improvements uh, on replicator extractor and, and applier. We're using some of the tricks that, uh, 
that we found with MySQL, some of the later versions, we're enabling uh, some of those tools and we're seeing a definite improvement in replicator performance. And that's always been also kind of a kind of a concern, but yes, uh, definite improvements there. Uh, and as far as management improvements, so I mentioned the T API tool, Tappy. Uh, so that allows you, that's an easy way to get into the API version two. Um, some uh, improvements to T provision, right? T provision used to be called Tugs and Provision Slave, but we've updated the name to make it more modern. Uh, now it's called T provision and it's more robust and fixed a lot of issues with T provision too. So now reprovisioning databases, you know, it, you know, for whatever architecture works really well now. And it's a lot faster than before. And there's also a whole new suite of tools, command line tools that manage THL retention, uh, purging of THL, uh, numerous improvements to T TPM Diag, which is what we use. Um, you know, if you open a support case, uh, we need to see some logs and you run TPM Diag. The information that's collected has been improved and it's a little bit more efficient too. So that helps with support. Um, and again, all kinds of command line tools that help automate processes or just make the overall administration of tungsten cluster that much easier. And the all new tungsten dashboard. So tungsten dashboard, again, introduced in version uh, six, is a really slick graphical management tool to manage tungsten cluster. Well, now, as I mentioned, using API 2.0, we see significant performance improvements using uh, tungsten dashboard. So it's really fast now. And especially with composite active active clusters, um, you know, it's a lot faster. Uh, performance is better, more robust. Um, you can add notes too to each node. So if a particular database node, you just want to make make some notes, um, you know, just for your own well-being to understand maybe what this node is doing or any any note whatsoever, um, you can put that into Tungsten Dashboard. <clears throat> uh, Tungsten Dashboard will also create audit logs for operations that happen within the context of Tungsten Dashboard. Um, so it's good to have an audit of what's done. Um, that might be for compliance purposes. And also this is the access point, the integration and access to Prometheus and Grafana. And if you look at these graphics, you can see, especially the one on the right, the tungsten metrics, uh, we can collect all sorts of metrics now um, from the various uh, MySQL servers and, and tungsten components and graph them here with Grafana. It's really nice looking and super customizable. And the graphic on the left shows you how easy it is basically. If you're in Tungsten Dashboard uh, under Tools, you can open these uh, windows in Grafana and Prometheus and create your monitoring in, in your graphs with Grafana. So this is a really big deal. This is a really slick uh, management tool and monitoring tool. And now a new topology, dynamic, active, active. So what is dynamic, active, active? Well, it really is like what we call composite, active, active. So if you remember, and maybe you're already running this, composite, active, active is two or more sites, uh, wide area sites or geo de deployed sites uh, that are all active, right? Each site is active. Um, with a simple connector setting change, we can change how active active works, right? And what's going to happen is we're going to uh, designate one site as being active, right? It's the site that's going to be written to um, for all operation, right? The other site or other sites they're still technically gonna be active, but they're not gonna be taking any traffic. So it's a combination of active, 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 passive, right? 
all sites are active, but only one site is taking traffic. Um, if the active site, the site that's taking traffic, has an issue and goes down, the connectors will automatically route traffic to the other site or sites, right? So it's an automatic failover. There's no manual in intervention. So it's kind of the best of both worlds for active active and active path and active passive. Um, so if you think about active passive, right? What we call CAP, composite active passive, um, one site is designated active and everything else is passive. If we need to do a failover, a human has to go in and actually initiate the failover. And for a lot of organizations that works quite well. Um, we want a human to make that decision and to decide when we're actually going to fail over. Uh, now, uh, other architectures say composite active active, all sites are active at one time, uh, at the same time, and each site is taking traffic. Well, the risk there is there's a potential for conflict. And, you know, most of our customers, they have that, you know, set up pretty well, but occasionally there can be a conflict um, that has to be sorted out, right? Um, however, failover is, is pretty easy in that case, right? We just route all traffic to the other site. Fine. Um, but having dynamic active actives gives you the best of both worlds, right? One site is active, therefore there's no need or there's no chance or risk of conflict and failover happens automatically to another site without any human intervention. So really, again, it's like the best of both worlds. Uh, this is really just a matter of changing uh, some settings in the connector. Uh, failover is fast. And again, no risk of conflicts using dynamic active active. So again, brand new in version seven. So just to wrap this up, uh, we have a few links for you. Uh, the first is a blog that tells all about the Tungsten release, right, version seven. So I would encourage everyone to read that uh, just to get an overview. Um, now, uh, with respect to dynamic active active, we have a blog that actually talks about all the different topologies and including dynamic active active. And it explains each topology really well and compares each one of them. So again, I would encourage everyone to read that as well. Even if they're happy with the topology that you have deployed, it might be interesting to look at some of the other topologies. Maybe they would serve you uh, even better. And then of course, our release notes, um, have a look at those to see everything that's uh, changed or been resolved in version seven. Any questions, feel free to contact anyone on this list. You can contact me. Again, my name is Matthew Lang, uh, Customer Success Director of, of the Americas. Um, any comments, questions, uh, anything at all, feel free to just drop me a note. I'd be happy to hear from you and happy to respond. And hope you enjoy version seven. And if you need any help with the upgrade, just reach out to us. We'll be happy to help you. Thank you.